What is up everyone, it's your boy Johnny and today what I got for you guys is another class setup but this time we're going to be looking at the MP7. This class is built for short to medium range maps, this isn't really built for long range maps so if you are that type of player who likes to you know mix it up while rushing and holding in fortresses then this is the class for you. But before we get into this video, if you guys haven't already, make sure you do leave a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications as well. Big share to all the 10 of my subscribers so far. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it moving. Road to 100 subscribers coming very soon. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So in this video, we're going to be doing like the same sort of structure as well to it. So I'm going to be going through the attachments and the purpose for each attachment, the perks and the purpose for each perk, the pros and cons and the final thoughts. So first of all, let's just get straight into the attachment. The first one is the compensator. Now it is an essential as this is going to be controlling the recoil that this weapon produces normally. Aiming down sights is actually affected as well, but like the MP5 class, each attachment goes hand in hand with each other, which means that other attachments will help resolve the cons of what other attachments have. Now let's move on to the barrel which is the FSS SWAT. Now this increases the aiming down sight speed which is obviously what we were losing from the compensator and it also increases our mobility as well. This is going to help dramatically as it's actually going to help you with the aiming onto the enemies at a much quicker pace than the actual opposing enemy. And if you guys don't already know, gunfights in Call of Duty are dependent on movement and who actually fired their weapon and connected their bullets first. So increasing your aiming down sight speed will help you do just that. Now for the mobility side of it as well, this will make the gun lighter as the barrel is a much shorter length than the original MP7 barrel, meaning you are shedding weight off and it allows you to run just a little bit quicker while holding this class. This can help you also push towards enemies or get you into position much more quickly as opposed to the original barrel as well as get into a position before the enemy team actually gets into that position themselves. Okay, so for the stock, we're going to be picking the Forge Tack Ultralight. Now this is the stock which is used for improving the weapon's agility while aiming down the sight. This stock actually increases your aim movement speed as well which actually means you are able to move just a little bit quicker when aiming down the sights as well. Not only that as well but this will benefit you when you are in a gunfight as you'll be able to aim down the sights, fire your weapon and move around at the same time. Now doing that will help you get connections with the enemy and they will struggle to connect bullets with yourself. In addition to that as well, the stock also increases your mobility and is a good competitor against the common choice which is no stock. I mean yes the no stock option obviously increases your mobility and it does make the gun a lot more lighter but you do lose more accuracy and actually you affect the control of the weapon as well in comparison to the ultralight. If you are just rushing enemies on small maps like shipment then the lack of control and the less accuracy will be no issue for you but this class is based for medium sized maps like Hackney Yard and stuff like that and if you do end up using the no stock on these types of maps then you will struggle to get kills from a mid range distance. Now let's move on to the rear grip, this honestly needs no introduction, it's the stipple grip type. This is by far the most common rear grip as it improves your aiming down sight speed as well as your sprint to fire speed. Making this gun so much easier to use when being a slayer type of player when aiming to try and get kills after sprinting to the enemy spawn. The aiming stability is decreased very slightly but due to having other attachments like I mentioned earlier like the ultralight stock they will compensate for the control we lose when using this attachment. Not only that but the grip take also increases your agility as a player and again as I mentioned just with the ultralight stock using this attachment also increases your agility which makes it easier for you to move while shooting and strafing around and makes it more difficult for the enemy to actually laser you or to connect shots with you and last but not least let's move on to the final attachment which is the commando foregrip now this is the only attachment I would say on this class that you could play around with I mean I typically like to run with the commando foregrip because it's just you know it's easier it increases the range and the accuracy which will help you in those short to mid range gunfights. The commander foregrip not only doesn't affect your aiming down sight speed but it also helps you maintain control of your recoil and keeps your aiming a lot more stable. However if you are playing more mid-range maps or maps like you know Azir Cave you know with the mid-range tunnels and the cave tunnels then you could easily switch it to the ranger foregrip to improve your damage and your range but it's only just going to be that tiny bit. You will notice a difference in the aiming down sight speed as it is differed when using the Ranger foregrip. So I just like to use the Commando okay, foregrip. Let's move on to the perks. Now the perks are the EOD, which helps obviously against. Okay, now let's move on to our perks. 
And her first perk is going to be the EOD, which helps against the problems of people nading at the beginning of the games, as it reduces the damage that you take from it significantly. If you are a bit more of a, like, let's say, a rush player, then you could use double time, as this increases your tactical sprint by 30% and allows you to get to your objective or to your position as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The second perk I like to pick and use is the restock which actually replenishes your tacticals and lethals every 25 seconds. Now what I like about this perk is that you can use it in times when you may need that lethal or tactical that you know you may have thrown at the beginning of the game. But if you've got restock enabled you could stun someone in a room and then allow yourself to push and obtain the kill more easily. However you wouldn't be able to do that if you used your lethal attack at the beginning of the game and didn't have restock on. Alternatively you can use point man or hardline if you are aiming to get kill streaks pretty quickly and try and be a bit more of a team player or ghost if you are aiming to be a little bit more of a stealth player the choice is completely yours really and the third and final perk is tracker now this is a perk I've only recently started using but since using it I've noticed significant improvement with decision making and also allowing myself to kill enemies with a lot more stealth now if you don't know what tracker does tracker shows you the, on the floor the enemy's footsteps and the enemy's trail and which direction they're actually going in how recent the trail is and also allows you to reveal only to yourself the enemy death locations and hides the death markers of the enemies that you have killed now with the enemy death locations being revealed you can sort of determine if you will if other players or the same enemy is near that location to go and avenge their death now this can help you improve your decision making as you can decide which direction to go into in order to flank the enemy and take advantage of this perk. Alternatively this perk allows you to hide the death markers of the enemies that you kill. So if you was to use a suppressor let's say on this weapon and you kill enemies more quietly your kill will not appear on the map for the enemies. This can actually lead as well to enemies running into the same position as their fallen teammates or the teammates going back to the same position to avenge the death which then could result in you getting more kills and getting kill feeds a lot more frequently. Okay, now over to the pros and cons of this weapon. So the pros, obviously, it is a very light weapon. It is a weapon that, you know, you can easily use, easily get used to as well if you had never used an MP7 class before. The other pro about it as well, which you can sort of make it a con if you will, is that it is highly customizable, these classes. Like, like I say, with the perks and stuff, especially on perk 2, you can pick whatever perk you really want to. And as well as the commando foregrip, like you can happily change that to a range of foregrip if you you're not happy with the commando full grip and you want to try and get more long range kills the one con that i have noticed is that yes you can get to that range of actually getting people in mid-range gunfights however the damage that you're actually giving to the enemy is significantly decreased now i am actually trying to look for a way to improve that and then i'll obviously let you guys know straight away there is the common mishap of obviously using fmj and stuff however if you guys don't know fmj is only used exclusively for bullet penetration and it doesn't actually help when getting a base kill now the final thought of the weapon now like i say the weapon is very light it's very easy to use obviously if you are the type of player who likes to mix it up with rushing and hold it down fortress and stuff like that this class setup is definitely going to be for you however if you are obviously trying to get more long shots or more mid-range to long range type of attacks and stuff on enemies then i would seriously recommend you do mess about with the foregrip and maybe if you want to compensate let's say the compensator then I would seriously recommend that you just try and compensate the compensator or the muzzle for more of maybe like a sight on there maybe like a red dot sight or you know a reflex sight something like that just to help reassure that you will get those long range kills and you can see the enemies from a longer distance. But guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Like I said at the beginning, make sure you smack that like button. Dislike if you didn't. Tell me why in the comment section down below. I would love to improve for you guys. And we are on the road to 100 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to subscribe and turn on post notifications. And guys, my name's been Johnny. You guys have been fantastic. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, peace.